As with the story node, reward nodes can have their titles, text, images, and sounds replaced. Next, you can select the type of reward that you'd like to give from this list. Let's begin with just a simple equipment reward. This kind of reward will present the player with a choice of which kind of items they'd like to equip. You can easily turn this into a shop by just toggling that option. You can get specific and choose which kind of equipment slots will be given, or even choose specific types of equipment to give to the player. You can select the equipment from the list. Next, let's look at the statistics reward. As with most rewards, you can control the size or potency of this reward. You can choose how long this reward will be active for, whether it be an encounter, a level, or permanent. If you choose something that has a duration, you can then set that duration. And you can select the target of this reward. If I set it to enemy, this will debuff or reduce the power of enemies rather than increasing the power or buffing my party. Finally, of course, I can choose which kind of statistic I would like to buff. If I want to get more specific, I can use the Entity Filter. This is covered more in its own video. You can give multiple rewards in one single reward node. If you select Randomly Pick Reward Count, you can actually randomize how many of these will be given. Again, you can set this as a single time or dynamic, depending on whether or not you plan on encountering this node again. If it's dynamic, it will offer a, a different reward every time that it's encountered. If you set it to one time, this node will offer the same reward every time it's encountered. Finally, you can set this node as hidden. The node won't process until a node beyond it has been selected, as with any other hidden node. And you can add a tag to this reward if you want to remove it later. You can learn more about tags in their own video.